G'day everyone and welcome back to the Cyber Minutes podcast. My name is Max and today I'm joined by Flynn and we've got some cool topics today. Uh, well, uh, from last week we have found that the third party linking both Santander and the Ticketmaster, they, um, it's the same third party so Snowflake is the name of them. Uh, we're also going to talk a bit about the Ticket Tech hack which a few of you may have gotten emails regarding that. Then we're going to talk about the BBC and just have some statistics and uh, just talk a little bit about things we've seen and some uh, common trends that we've been seeing in the in the field at the moment. So, yeah, first of all, I'll just say, yeah, that the uh, the Santander breach and the Ticketmaster breach, which we brought up last week, um, it's all been wrapped up nicely for us because uh, it turns out the third party there is um is a company that does cloud storage solutions called snowflake um there's not really a whole lot of information what went on there but it turned it looks like uh user accounts coming from snowflake uh were then used to access and um exfiltrate data from both uh Ticketmaster and santander um looks like there's a bit of a ransom going on there as well uh where the some threat actors are asking for money but you know, thought I'd just bring it up um, just to close that off from last week. Next thing is uh, we'll talk about the BBC um, misconfiguration. So, Flynn, do you want to talk a little bit about that one? Yeah, so there was a data breach with the BBC. Basically, 25,000 uh, records were stolen that were basically customer, not customer, sorry, employee information. Um, and the reason why we wanted to bring this up uh, well, for starters, the big scare for them is is something to do with their pensioner scheme. Uh, apparently, the data is currently being used to, or could be used to, um, sort of disallow them from the the pensioner scheme. Like commit some fraud or items. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe so. Uh, also, another thing is it was a bit funny. We were Max and I were reading before this an article and. They were getting their terminologies mixed up, but uh, basically, what it seems to have happened is a misconfiguration of some kind. Uh, we don't know if it's like an API or just general internet-facing um, uh, something within the BBC. Uh, but that's how it was occurred. It doesn't seem to be any sort of malware or anything like that. Uh, but why I, I wanted to talk about it was um, just some like stats around uh, data breaches that a lot of people don't realize, and the main one is that. A lot of data breaches are actually employee information. So it's 40% of all records compromised uh, in a data breach involve employee PII. Um, and you don't really think about how it is. A lot of the time it's employee information. But if you kind of take a step back, it makes sense. Because employee information, as much as we always talk about how um, data should be deleted and whatnot, um, employee information, a lot of the time they have to keep it on deck because, yeah. you know... Um, you have to pay your employees. You have to know where they're going. Obviously, that should be deleted afterwards, but we obviously know that's not the case a lot of the time, yeah. at least in Australia. Um, but And also, that information is extremely valuable. Like, if you have a tax file number, uh, name, address, date of birth, uh, you could do a lot. You yeah. can p- commit uh, basically identity fraud. Um, and then on top of that, a lot of times, there's going to be some uh, form of ID in there. Um, potentially, you know, background checks, police checks, especially working in security, that's often a thing. Yep. Uh, so, you know, you could even have some form of blackmail there. Yeah, and there's always, like, passports are always, you know, they usually get you to upload passports if you go on work trips anywhere. So that yeah. kind of stuff is also held, uh, which, yeah, it's not so good. Uh, for, years, for those who don't know, the BBC is a uh, uh, media company in the UK, the British Broadcasting Company. I'm not sure how many people really know about it. <laughs> I think it's uh, fairly well known, but yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, it's just a it's just a weird one. So twenty six thousand employees. So employees, uh, yes, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I don't know. It seems like a lot. That's that's a really big company, then. Yeah. Well, it's the BBC. They've been around forever, so they probably have heaps of um, employee files on hand. True. Which is probably why the um, the biggest issue was the pensioner stuff because there's probably a lot of uh, employees that aren't there. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's true. Yeah, not too good. Just keep in mind, well, there's nothing really you can do about it because if you're going to work somewhere, you need to give them your tax file number because you've got to get paid. Yep. 
but maybe if you're leading the company, say, oi, delete my data, <laughs> <laughs> which they w- probably won't do. But <laughs> yeah. Even like exercising healthy cyber practices, so getting new IDs issued every few years and making sure that you're... I don't think you can do that with a tax file number though, right? Yeah, maybe not. Yeah. Mm. I'm actually not entirely sure about it. Yeah. But, you know, things that you can change, obviously, it's worth, yes. um, yeah, keeping them fresh. Or at least ke- knowing that it can happen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, keeping yourself in the know a little bit. So moving on, there was a interesting uh, breach from Ticketmaster as well. So it looks like it was names, date of birth, uh, last names as well, uh, email addresses and phone numbers. Ticketmaster, sorry, not Ticketmaster, Ticket Tech, they uh, they seem to be more forthcoming than um than Ticketmaster. They say Ticketmaster, Ticket Tech, <laughs> five times in a row. See how you go with that. But no, Ticket Tech have uh, responded by sending out an email to lots of customers. Uh, lots of people are getting them. I know a few people that have gotten emails from them. It seems like the undertone is fairly apologetic. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on the whim and say, Ticket Tech's crisis management is a in a better place at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Ticket Tech's um, it looks like they're doing pretty well uh, in terms of that. They're you know being transparent ish. They're talking to their customers and yeah, being a bit more transparent than what Ticketmaster are doing. Yeah. Um, Do we know what the cause of the breach was yet? They haven't said anything yet. Yeah. Yeah. But that, yeah, they've just been pretty apologetic versus Ticketmaster. We still haven't really heard anything. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't think we still have heard anything from them. No, no way. Um, it, it actually brings up a really interesting thing where it may not be related at all, but generally when one player in an industry gets hit, you f- will often see that uh, attacks tend to happen within that industry. Yeah, you know, for every single company. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Um, it, it is hard to say with this one just because it's, it's two. Our um, our sample size is fairly small. Yeah, but it's two of the biggest. Yeah. So, um, who knows? Who knows if it is related? Maybe down the line, they'll it'll be the same third party, but that's very speculatory. So we yeah. will never know. Yeah. Um, oh, we may know at some point, but yeah, yeah, no, it's interesting. But yeah, like usually when a financial services company gets hit, then you know, a lot of mother like a domino effect. It's a domino through. effect, yeah. usually, because then uh, either the attackers will then use that same vulnerability everywhere they go to see if there's anyone else with the same issue, or it also paints a spotlight on that industry, and other threat actors will then come and try and you know get their piece as well. And yeah, go for similar ones that um, just got attacked. Yeah, it was particularly a thing that we saw, I suppose, back in. I call it the Wild West of cybercrime, but I feel like it was actually more civilized where you know, gangs were more like, I suppose, businesses and there was this whole honor among thieves sort of mentality yes. where they kind of said, no, we're not targeting critical infrastructure. And then uh, I can't remember who, it was WannaCry, I think was the first one that targeted a, um, the NHS hmm. and then, which is North Korea for who people who don't know. Yep. Um, the ransomware, not the NHS. Yes, the ran- the ransomware was from uh, North Korea. Yeah. Um, and as soon as that happened, medical uh, providers and hospitals started getting attacked more. Yeah. Um, as soon as the Colonial Pipeline incident happened, which was actually a, it was never meant to happen. It was caused by a intern, I believe, who basically just did it on their own. And they're like, "No, why did you do that?" But as soon as that happened, it's been the Wild Wild West. People are uh, cyber criminals are just targeting uh, critical infrastructure now. Yeah, it um, seems like at the moment it's a, it's like, I know it's being treated like a gold mine. Everything. Yeah, there's no holds barred really at all. It's all just go nuts to see what things you can attack. And yeah, the honor among thieves thing it doesn't really seem to be um, the case so yeah. much anymore. Not that it means that they were secure beforehand, because you know, obviously, especially the critical infrastructure, state actors, mm. they've always been targeting things oh, whatever, yeah, they, they, whatever they, they need to do yep. um, but yeah yeah, it's interesting to see could just be a coincidence that Ticket Tech and then um, Ticket Master the other way around though Ticket yep. Master then Ticket Tech yep. um, could be related incidents in general or could just be as Max said the spotlight on that industry and then people have decided to attack yeah yeah no definitely uh, we had a few interesting statistics as well to bring up on that so the just to do with the third parties. Um, so it turns out that 98% of companies have a third party that have been breached. 
Yeah. I guess it's not really that hard to see these days when you know Microsoft have been breached in the past. Yes, nearly every company has some affiliation with Microsoft. Really, um, I'm surprised there's two percent that haven't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, geez, uh, they probably don't have you know any third parties yeah. more. <laughs> but yeah, so it, it's kind of a wake up call now to to you know make sure that you're keeping track of your third parties, which we've said week on week, and it's. You know, it's really good time that this uh, the CBS two thirty is coming in later this year. Uh, keeping track on your third parties, third parties, really seems like it can't be more relevant. Yep. Because you know, if you imagine, if we do two degrees instead of one degree from your company, imagine how much exposure you'd have then. Yeah, um, yeah. Third party management, we said a million times, isn't done well. Uh, hopefully, this uplift will, uh, I suppose, light a flame under the industry. Um, to do a bit better. Uh, that being said, I don't think it will until you know APRA or whoever decides to have a bit of a uh, kick up a stink because they go, ah, oh, nobody's actually complying with this. Yeah. Um, and it's bound to happen that you know everybody's interpreting CPS two thirty, and then when it comes out, it's going to be completely different anyway. How far along the line are we in that uh, in the cyber um, plan that the government released last year? It was a ten-year plan, so okay, so, we're, um, so we're still at the first phases, I believe. Oh no, it might not have been a ten-year plan. It might have been by twenty thirty. Okay. Um, yeah, pretty sure. So the first stage of basically not doing much. Is yeah. Still here, still then it's the second stage of every company starts panicking. Yeah. Because they have to comply with stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Thanks for listening. Just a reminder that the Cyber Minutes podcast is for educational purposes only. The views expressed by hosts and guests are their own, not necessarily their employers. Advice discussed is general advice. We promote ethical discussions, not illegal activities. Have a cybersecurity question? Send an email to cyberminutespodcast at gmail.com as we'd love to answer it. Stay cyber safe.